Hello guys, Ilya Marchenko here. And I have to confess, I felt again. It's like every morning I wake up and I fail. And I'm not talking about my haircut right now. That was not my fault. I'm talking about something different. And you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to fail more in the future. Fails are part of our lives. You know who doesn't fail? Those who do nothing. Sounds epic. So I didn't enter the qualification of the Toddy Challenger. Didn't expect it to be the next day after the major deadline. So now things are pretty messy. The Lord tells me he can get me out of this mess, but he's pretty sure you're fucked. I'm forced out of main draw in toddy, which is, I would say, a big chance to get in, and 8 out of main draw in Prague, which is still possible, but less chances than toddy. And as we are all starving to get back to the tournaments, I want to play this week anyway, even if it's just a qualification event. With Prague I still have this option, because you didn't have to enter it online in advance. On-sign signing should be enough. But you know what is the main problem? I have a feeling that I drive 3 hours to Prague on Thursday to get that Covid test. Then I get into Toddy on Friday and I will have to drive 13 hours to Italy because there is no other option of flying there in today's world. It's pretty messy up there this year. This script was written earlier at the end, my shoulder didn't let me play any tournaments that week. Good old. But this story has pushed me to tell you more about my organizational fails during these years on tour. And here are my top ones. This happened in my first ITF in Rimne. I was 15 and I was there alone, so no coach or parents. I'd lost the second round of qualification and while crying in the locker room Stop crying, you sniveling ass! Someone told me that there was one lucky loser spot. And a couple moments later, I was participating in my first ever lucky loser toss. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was one from four. And to my big surprise, that second chance was mine. Surprise! Can you imagine that? first main draw of an ITF tournament ever. It was pretty late and the schedule was not ready. Supervisor said that nobody from qualification would play the next day. Next morning I got a call from a coach I know who was at the tournament as well. And his words were Where the hell are you? Why are you not on site? I haven't checked the schedule and the supervisor put me the first match. Later on, he explained that he meant only qualifiers, not lucky losers. Of course, I couldn't prove anything. This happened in Breast Challenger. I was coming back from injury. Yeah, the usual state of my career. So I was not in the main draw. But was not very far out either. I've even requested for a wildcard from organizers. The main issue was that I hadn't played a qualification in a challenger for almost 5 years. So I simply forgot to sign. When the draw came out without my name on it, the first reaction was I got in or had been given a wildcard. But then I realized It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Qualification was not full, with a lot of buys, but according to rules, the supervisor couldn't put me in. At the end, I was very lucky that Bublik has made a late withdrawal from the main draw, so Sakharov moved in to his place and I got in as alternate. And I have to mention, of course I've passed the qualies. An ATP qualification event in Halle. Well, this one is not 100% my fault, although it was my responsibility to check. The booking. While I was practicing in Donetsk, we had a position in our tennis club of a travel manager who was in charge of all tickets and hotel bookings for the players. But no one actually stayed in that job for too long. 
Maybe because the salary was not good enough, or maybe they were not smart enough. I don't know. So the new girl was trying to make a good impression on our boss and had found a very cheap route. Of course, complicated as hell, but cheap. The keyword is it's cheap. I had to take a flight from Donetsk to Kiev, then from Kiev to Prague, stay overnight in Prague, and next day take a train from Prague to Halle. I think even it was one change. So I arrived to Halle, showed the address to a taxi driver, who of course couldn't speak any English. And he takes me to the address, and to my big surprise, we arrive not to a big tennis stadium, Gary Weber, but to some random house. After complaining with the taxi driver for a while, I understood that I'm in Halle Sale. But the tournament, together with that Gary Weber Stadium, are in Halle Westfalen, on the other side of Germany. And because of that, I arrived to Halle Westfalen 30 minutes late for the qualification signing. So the next day, I was on my way back home. Since then, I mostly do all my reservations myself, you know, because I'm smart enough. Or at least double checking everything. Well, that happened many times to me. Practices, matches. You put them out of your tennis bag to dry and then forget to put back. I think every tennis player has done that at least once. Please, tell me that you have. Please. But this particular one I remember till now. And here is why. I've just moved to Donetsk, late practice, raining outside, courts were around 20 minutes walking distance. So I had come to our training facility and found out that I have a shoe in my back. But only one. I ran full speed back to the apartment. And you know what? The shoe was not there. I couldn't find it. I was looking everywhere. Thank God I had another pair and I almost made it to practice on time. Almost. But that's not the end of it. I couldn't find that shoe anywhere that evening. But next morning I found it on the street. It was just laying there, not far from my place. Don't ask, I have no idea. Oh, this one happens quite often. From my previous videos, you probably know that I don't like to wake up early. What? And if I have to, I'm a bit slow and not in a good mood. So for such mornings, it's pretty typical situation. I pack my stuff, sit in the car, drive, park, open my trunk and realize that I'm at the tennis club. But my morning practice is at the gym and vice versa. I don't know what's wrong with that tournament, but I felt it not one but three times there. For starters, it's an exciting event on a fast and unpredictable surface. I like it, so I take that extra time to prepare myself for grass court season. And you can imagine how disappointing it is after a week of preparation on grass to realize that you haven't entered the main event on this surface. For me that year, it was Wimbledon qualification. At least I realized it before traveling. Another one, usually I stay in Premier Inn in London. But one year we decided to rent a house with Breakpoint team. Bike the street. And what do you think? Did they cancel my Premier Inn reservation? Of course not. 100 pounds cancellation fee. And the last one from London. Grass court shoes are wearing out pretty quickly. Well, because they are designed for grass, but behind the baseline, there is usually not much left. So I had two new pairs for my Wimbledon event. I come for the first practice with my brand new Nike shoes, put the right one first, and then I have another right shoe. Perhaps it's a curse. It's a curse, I'm 100% sure. Well, that's it for today. Hit that like button if you enjoyed my stories. Subscribe if you are starving for more. Thanks for watching and see you next time.